uh, for this for this next it one. It looks but awesome. I can't. It's going to be pretty cool. And you know, and what I did you fly? My, so I was uh, initially right out of flight school. I was a EA six, which is a EA six B, which is a it's called the Prowler. It's a um, it's essentially like a Vietnam era attack jet off the carrier. Um, that jet was sort of at the end of its service life, and so a couple of years into my time in the fleet, I transitioned my whole my whole squadron. Um, transitioned to the E18G, which is the basically the G variant of the F18. So if you look at like, you know, the Blue Angels or, or those kind mm-hmm. of jets, the jets that are going to be in this next Top Gun, um, that those are like the E and F variants of the F18. The EA18G is essentially a, uh, a variant of that with, um, with some modifications, some, some different sort of piping, if that makes sense. And our, our mission is Generally speaking, uh, we call it suppression of enemy air defense. So that's everything from um, from you know, radar jamming to we have what's called harm missiles. We've got a couple of air to air missiles, and essentially it's just suppressing enemy air defense. So as we you know press into a target, say from the aircraft carrier, that we can you know get in, get out, come home safely. Everybody wins. Cool. Well, we win, I should say. UFOs. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Have you listened to uh, what Commander Fra- uh, Fraber's account? Yeah, I have. What'd you think about it? Um, I mean, really interesting. You know, the guy's a he's, he's a credible guy, right? Yeah, super credible. But like his, the one thing that I think a lay person is not going to understand is the breakdown of why he was looking at his equipment, which wasn't matching with what he was seeing visually. Right. Um, so I, I haven't heard like a second hand, like second hand person break that down. I, I mean, I looked at all the the unclassified. Um, you know, HUD footage and all that kind of stuff, the FLIR, uh, all that good stuff. And I mean, it's definitely wild. Like it's a, it's, it's a crazy story. And the fact that there's no, uh, on the FLIR, there's no, um, signature, heat signature and all that stuff. It's like, it's, it's pretty damn interesting. So In I multiple accounts too. Like, right. He wasn't so, the only person. I don't know, man. Like this is one of those things where I just don't have enough information to know one way or the other, but I see it and I'm like, okay, well I could definitely see how a person can, um, you know, uh, walk away with with some beliefs uh, uh, after having seen that, and so I I don't know those guys um, personally, mm-hmm. but I I know folks who do, and um, you know my my friends have have vouched for them like hey these are good guys they they're not uh, they're, they're not you know weirdos or anything like you know, you, you would think that uh, well yeah on he's, the UFO side it's like oh geez somebody saw a UFO like hey what's what's the deal here but these are normal guys good you know, normal fleet aviator types and, and yeah, saw what they saw. He hasn't been out there saying, Hey, there's UFOs and stuff. Right. He's just been like, here's the account. This is weird as shit. Like, right. And then like breaking that down. It's definitely super compelling, man. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to, what to think about that at this point. So as I guess, would fighter pilot be the proper term for me? Yeah. No. So I'm a NFO Naval flight officer is like the, is the, and why not? What, why would you use that term? Uh, it's just, it means different things, man. So like a, because of a the naval, so like depending on what you do, there's, uh, there's like a naval aviator that would be sort of, you know, like a pilot, a naval sure. flight officer is like what I did, um, managing weapon systems, et cetera. Uh, and then different folks just have different names. So like not everybody, I think oh, that's, that's right. Like Cause a, you were the goose, yep, right? So okay. Sure, yeah. So, so yeah, we'd say, we'd either say, depending on, on what platform you're in, you'd either say. NFO or WIZO, weapon systems officer or electronic warfare officer or back in the day, like in, in the old Top Gun, uh, in the F-14, they used to call them Rios, radar intercept officers. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a touchy subject, but NFO is like the, is the safe way to, to go about it. Whatever, still badass, whatever. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and how's that physical fitness? Like, how, I mean, I would assume as a pilot, focus is a big thing. Like you're sitting for long periods of time, right? And you're looking at instrument panels. So, I mean, you can't be out of shape for something yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a kind of a different, it's different. So what really matters, I think, you know, as far as I can tell in, in that universe is particularly in a, like a tactical jet off the aircraft carrier, there's um, demands on your body, particularly as, as it pertains to, to G forces. Yeah. So your ability to deal with, with G's. And so that comes down to yes, sort of general physical fitness, but also, and this is kind of interesting. The, the higher your blood pressure, the better you will be at, at handling G's. 
So really, you know, you don't really want like the, the, I shouldn't say you don't want, but like the guys who do best or the people who do best aren't like the distance runner, you know, people with the super low heart rate, like what generally you would think as, uh, what you would see as, as super healthy, because generally what you want is high blood pressure, somewhat high blood pressure that keeps the, the pressure of the blood in your body, um, high so that you keep blood in your brain as, mm-hmm. as the G forces get pulled on. So you're flying, you know, 500 knots, whatever it is. And all of a sudden, uh, stuff the stick into your, into your gut. And now you're in this, you know, big turn, right? So you've, you are now applying a ton of G's to the jet and to your body. And so really what that means is you're just increasing the force of gravity on your body. And that goes for, for your head, for your arms, for the blood inside of your body, et cetera. So as you pull those G's, the blood has a tendency to pull from your, um, or to, to depart your, your head and go down. So to people black out. Right, exactly. So you start to gray out initially and then gray out, meaning like you're, 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 you lose, um, vision. So slowly you, it kind of like tunnels. So you have a, uh, less and less vision until it's nothing. And then you may, you know, black out. So the, the pass out, it's called a, uh, G lock G loss of consciousness is what they call it. So at the end of the day, what you want is, or what you do in that scenario is, is when you feel the G coming on or when you know it's about to come on, you kind of like squeeze, there's a whole, you know, litany of things that you do, but bottom line is what you do is like squeeze your, your, uh, your legs, your abs, your butt, and then sort of like hold your breath, uh, for lack of better purpose or for lack of better sort of explanation. And really what you're doing is pushing the blood back up into your head. And so it turns out that the people who do best at that ha- are, you know, burger folks <laughs> eating a burger, drinking a Coke, doing that kind of stuff. So it's like kind of a weird, and like most folks are, are in that world are, are fit. Mm-hmm. Um, just not in the way that you, you might, you might think. Well, those guys, like I love the right stuff. I think, I think they made like a mini series about it again. Um, but I can't like, if you go back to the old movie, especially it's a great movie, <laughs> but the real guys, they all lived minus Gus Grissom. Right. Um, they all lived forever. They were just like super healthy people. Right. I so. mean, I think they're like, I mean, at the end of the day, if, if you're the, and this is just me talking now, but if you're the type of person that is going to sort of go through all of the jump through all the hoops required to become like, not only to, to become a military officer then, but to, to get through flight school, to get through, like, it's a lot of studying. It's like a relatively mm-hmm. academic uh, field to choose, I think, in, in the military. And so, like, you know, it, I think it just self-selects, uh, generally speaking, a type of person that is interested in being healthy and smart and fit and all that stuff. But, I mean, that said, obviously, there are many, many exceptions to that rule. So, um, again, but I, uh, I know that I can speak, like, uh, put a broad... Uh, you know, explanation on that, but yeah, f- flying just always blows my mind. I remember, so the, I did a half marathon. It was the U S air force half marathon. My sister was active duty at the time and it was in beautiful Dayton, Ohio, <laughs> <laughs> but I finished my half marathon and I was waiting around for uh, my sister and her friend to finish their marathon. And I was talking to who was a fighter pilot and he was, he, he damn near like convinced me like, I'm like, you're going to flight school. Like he was talking about my background, um, like, cause I, all the math and stuff I did. And he was like, oh, you'd be great. You're in great shape for it. But I just could never wrap my mind around flying. Like it's still, you know, I've got friends who work for commercial airlines and I just like you, like, you get in it and you just fly like it's a trip, man. Yeah. It's a trip. And then civil air patrol, one of the things you could do was you took free flight lessons in little Cessnas. Cool. Um, and that's still like the guy would come out, you know, look like he hasn't slept like a little rugged, <laughs> pull keys out. Like it's a car. That's hilarious. Turn that thing on. And then we're just off. And it just, you know, it just always just fascinates me. Yeah. If I meet someone that flies, it's a, I mean, honestly, like it's, it was a heap of fun and it's like, it, it, uh, the, the process of learning was, was incredibly interesting. And the, the great thing about, you know, military aviation is like flying the jet or, you know, doing all the things that you need to do to, to basically fly, uh, fly, launch, go land safely. That's like, carry that's it. starting. That's like the starting position. And so there's a whole other world after that, whether just like you said, like whether now we're talking about doing all that at the carrier, then there's a whole, you know, litany of, of air to ground, um, 
techniques, tactics, procedures that you need to figure out to, to make sure you can do the job safely. There's air to air stuff uh, that you need to learn if that's, if that's going to be in your, you know, your job description. And it's just like the, there's, there's no point where you are done learning period. That's um, the best. Yeah. And so you're, you're no kidding. Even the guys who have been doing it for 15, 20 years, they're still, not as qualified as they could be. Like they're still like looking for the next qualification. They've got, Hey, in my level four, am I going to be an air wing, uh, air wing lead? Am I, you know, there's always something on the horizon and there's always something to learn. That was like one, one incredible, I was, I was very lucky to get that takeaway from just Naval aviation generally is like, man, like regardless of who you are and how good you are, like you're going to screw up constantly. And the, the folks who, do best are those that learn from those mistakes. And that's not a, you know, that's not something that you just learn by osmosis. That's a, that is a deliberate thing where you say, okay, (laughs) we're going to really do, we're going to try really hard and like work hard to make sure that this flight is planned well and everything is set so that we can execute well. Got it. So now we've briefed the flight, uh, in the flight itself, everything is sort of like you, you have, almost, almost thought about everything you could think of to include all the, um, contingencies, et cetera. And always something, you know, something comes up. Um, so you've got to like have, have the training and then the, the, the mindset to be able to flex with, you know, with speed and alacrity. And then at the end of all that, now you're going to debrief the event. And that's where like things actually kind of get tough. Cause you're just like, okay, I worked really hard. This is what went well. This is what didn't. Um, and I'm going to call myself out for the things that I, I screwed up. And for sure somebody has, you know, you're never going to be the, the guy that catches everything that went wrong. So then, you know, Hey Wes, it's your turn. Okay. Now you debrief. Now you debrief. Now you debrief. And we're all kind of like learning. And it's like one of those things where you have to kind of put your ego on the shelf and put your sort of like, if you're a defensive person, if, if, you know, if you're a human being, generally you're going to feel i think defensive about folks kind of coming at you even though you're like well you know you, you've got like excuses and yada 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 but the folks who do best are those who who pull out a pen and a paper and and write write it down look at the the folks that are giving them a debrief right in the eye it's a copy that i got it i got that for action i'll fix it and then actually go do that and so you know that was something that did not really honestly come naturally to me it does come natural to anyone right right and so <laughs> I, I learned, I think over time, just like, Hey, this is our culture. This is what we do. Like in, in flight school, one of my uh, instructors told me, I think I probably had a particularly bad flight or something. And he's just like, all right, man, put your alligator skin on. Cause you know, here it comes. And I was like, all right, here we go. And you know, it was just like an hour, two hours of just getting hammered by this guy. And I was fortunate to like pick it up, learn, come back, uh, and, and do a better job next time and demonstrate that, Hey man, I'm, I'm listening when you, when you give me a debrief and I'm putting that to action and now I'm better. So, you know, I, that's a, that's a skill set and a, a frame of mind. I think that I probably wouldn't have developed on my own were it not for my time, you know, in the cockpit doing the, doing the Navy thing. So again, very lucky. There's not, that is not the reason I, I did that or the reason I chose to do that coming out of the Academy or anything, but I'm very lucky that, that I did because I learned all these other things that like that, that I would not have picked up otherwise. 